Welcome to the Joy School Podcast. Real talk about what it takes to create your happiest, healthiest, and most dynamic life. And now, here's your host, transformational life coach, happiness strategist, and best-selling author, Christy Ling Spencer. Well, hello, amazing friends, and welcome to the season finale for season three of the Joy School podcast. I am so glad you're back with me for another episode. I'm so excited because today we are going to talk about six amazing gifts that you can give yourself. But before I get into that, I want to share, first of all, this season, I feel like we've really leveled things up. If you missed any episodes, I invite you during our little break that's coming up here over the holidays to go back and tune in and catch up because there are so many good ones. And this is season three, as I mentioned, we will be back for season four in the very early spring. So I'm super excited about that because I'm already working on topics and a couple of incredible guests. So With that, I also want to share that I did receive some data, some great information on the show last week and how it's doing. And we are actually in the top 5% worldwide, which is absolutely mind blowing. So thank you so much to all of you who have tuned in and supported the show and written reviews. And really just for all of your love and support, I could not do the show without all of you. So thank you so much. And a special shout out to our friends in unique and exciting places around the world. We have people tuning in from the Caribbean, from Australia, from South Africa, from the UK, and from Mexico, and of course, the United States. So Thank you so much to all of you. And if you are someplace in the world and would love to let us know you're listening to the show, please leave me a comment over on Instagram or on Facebook or write a review for the show on your favorite podcast platform because I love hearing from you. And I also love hearing where people are tuning in from around the world. It just makes my heart happy. So thank you so much to each and every one of you. Now the holidays are here. It is a mixed bag time of year for many people because it can be quite stressful. But at the same time, we're also trying to think about what we want for our life in the coming year, right? And how are we going to step things up? And what are our goals? And where are we now? And where do we want to be next year at this time? And with all of that, we're balancing time with friends and family and holiday shopping. And there can be some overwhelm involved. So I'm hoping that some of these gifts that you can give yourself that we're going to talk about on the show today, as well as our Joy School Habit that I'm going to share with you later in the show will help you through the holiday season and beyond with all of those things and more. So I am looking forward to spending time with friends and family this year. I will actually be in Los Angeles the week before Christmas spending time. We got an Airbnb with my brothers and their families, my nieces and nephews, and we're going to be out there for a few days and seeing my parents. And I'm looking forward to the sunny weather. Well, hopefully sunny weather (laughs) and and seeing some of my good friends. That is my hometown. So that's where I'll be. I would love to hear what you're up to. So like Like I said, visit me on Instagram or Facebook and drop me a comment and let me know. All right, so let's dive into today's topic. We are going to talk about six gifts you can give yourself. And these are actually permanent gifts, which is nice. They don't expire. I love all of these. And I wrote out the notes for today's show really with the intention of supporting you, not just through the holiday season, but in the coming year in creating the year that you're envisioning for your life. So let's chat about number one. Number one is the gift of self-compassion. So I want you to think about the love and the compassion and the kindness that you so freely give to other people, offer to other people in your life. And I want you to understand that we all owe ourselves that same compassion, that same love, and that same understanding and patience that we so willingly give to others. It's 
amazing to me. And I have done this many times in my life and I have really worked hard not to do this anymore, but how we can slip into a place of being so hard on ourselves and having such a lack of compassion when we make a mistake or when we're not feeling up to doing certain things or when we fail to show up for ourselves in some way, right? And really that lack of compassion and being so hard on ourselves is holding us back from joy and holding us back from really being seen by our own heart, right? We all want to be seen. We all want to have compassion and feel understood. And we have the power to give those gifts to ourselves. Self-compassion is so important. It really is a key to healing because when you look back on the things in your life, maybe that you ruminate over, that you cycle through your mind at night when you're up at three in the morning and, and I've been there and I have things in my past and mistakes I've made and things that I still tend to catch myself being a little bit hard on myself still to this day. But I have that muscle exercised where I'm able to catch myself and be like, okay, let's look at this here. Let's ask some good questions. Did I do the best I could with the place I was in at the time? Yes, I did. Or did I learn from that mistake or that situation? Absolutely. And what I learned has improved my life. Or sometimes just to look back and recognize, you know what, I'm a human being and human beings sometimes are not themselves and make mistakes. And we all are in that same boat, right? And when we realize that, and we can look at ourselves with that kind of a lens, with love and compassion, it is so healing and also so empowering I have found that for me, having more self-compassion actually makes me less afraid of making mistakes (laughs) because... For me, the person I feared the most if I was going to screw something up was myself back when I was so hard on myself, right? But now that I am more easy on myself and more forgiving of myself and have more compassion for myself and of course love... I am a little bit more fearless when it comes to trying new things. So there are so many benefits to it. So that's number one, work on growing your self-compassion and think in terms of giving yourself the same love and patience and compassion and kindness that you freely give to others. All right. Number two is a really good one. I love this one. And I recently made a reel about this over on Instagram. And I believe I shared it on TikTok as well. And this one is let other people be wrong about you. Just let them be wrong. There are going to be people in your life who misunderstand you or who think things about you that are not true. And really the power for us to change that is so little. You can't change people's opinions or minds all the time. Now, sometimes there's a misunderstanding that's very clear and we can clear things up with an apology or with some well-spoken, articulate words around whatever the situation might be. But Other times people are just going to have the wrong impression about you. And there is so much freedom in knowing that it is not our job to change that. And just to say, you know what, I'm just going to let them be wrong and go about my day. (laughs) There is something really beautiful about that, my friends. And, you know, I know for me, most of my life, I so badly wanted people to like me and I so badly wanted to be understood and accepted by everyone around me. But as humans, that's just not in the cards, right? Hopefully most of the people in your life love you and accept you because those are the kinds of people we should be surrounding ourselves with. But there are always going to be people that are going to pop up that are going to, for whatever reason, have the wrong idea or misunderstand something. And when you give yourself the gift of just letting them be wrong, it really is an amazing burst of freedom. I mean, think about it. Doesn't it kind of make you smile in your heart just thinking about that? Just let them be wrong. Just let them. It really is that simple. And it's a beautiful gift you can give yourself. All right. So moving on to number three, we've got six to share in the show today. So I'm moving through these fairly quickly. If you miss any, I encourage you just to listen to the episode once again. And number three is knowing the gift of knowing that your happiness and well-being and best life oftentimes has more to do with what you remove from your life than what you add to it. 
And I've mentioned this on the show before, and some of you have heard me say this, but I can't say it enough. It is so key to know, give yourself the gift of knowing And going about your life and planning things on a regular basis, knowing that your happiness and your well-being and your best life oftentimes has more to do with what you remove and clear from your life than what you add to it. So this season, I encourage you to spend some time minimizing, spend some time focusing on what you can clear out, both emotional and physical clutter, right? And... Think in terms this season. So the holidays, a lot are about maximizing, right? (laughs) And so this season, when you see things that feel like maximizing to you, train your mind to go the other way and think, where can I minimize here? (laughs) And it really is an approach that can bring such peace, not just in the holiday season, but as you move into the new year and you want to clear space for new energies and new things and new goals to come into your life, right? So again, number three, the gift of knowing that your happiness, well-being, and best life sometimes has more to do with what you clear and remove from your life than what you bring into it. All right, number four, this one I've also talked about on the show, but I really want to drive it home, and that is commit to some kind of a morning practice until it becomes a habit. This is a huge gift you can give yourself. I talk quite a bit about making over your mornings and how important your mornings are, and the way you start your morning is the way you live your day. Now, we know, and I know this very well, that sometimes we do have a hectic day. Our morning doesn't really go the way we'd like it to, or we don't have a lot of time. We have to be up at 5 a.m. to go to the airport, or you know, whatever it is life's throwing at us. So, what can be really handy and supportive is committing to a small morning practice that you can show up for no matter what your day looks like. Even if you have to get up at 5 a.m. to go to the airport, even if you've got a giant meeting you have to be at really early that you need to prep for or whatever it is, right? You've got relatives coming into town. If you have a simple one to two minute little practice that you're committed to doing every morning, and maybe it can be something that you even do before you're even out of bed. You just do it privately in your safe space before you get up to help get your mindset right for the day. So I've given some examples on the show before of things you can do for this. So one of them is choosing a word of the day. This is a real simple one that takes less than a minute. When you're laying in bed in the morning, think about how you want to feel that day and how you would like your day to look and choose a word of the day that represents that. This is much like the practice of choosing a word of the year, right? It's your personal theme for the day. And sometimes I like to even write mine down on a piece of paper so that I can see it throughout the day. I have a beautiful pad that I've created that every member of my new program, The Joy School, gets, and it's called The Daily Edit. And there are many boxes to fill in here to help you create your most amazing day each day. But one of the boxes is your word of the day. So you don't necessarily need the daily edit pad, although it is fabulous to do this little exercise, but the word of the day is just one example. You can also do a deep breathing exercise, which we're going to talk about a little later in the show in Joy School Habits, and you can just do that for a couple of minutes, or you can do a short one or two minute meditation, whatever it looks like for you to start your day off to where you're thinking for a minute or two about what you want out of the day. So Create and commit to some kind of a little morning practice that you can show up for no matter what your day looks like. And then build your morning around that. Build your day around that. Some mornings, that's all you'll have time for is that little one or two minute thing, but it will make a difference. Other days, you'll have several practices that you want to do and maybe a meditation, maybe some yoga, maybe go to the gym, whatever it is to build your amazing morning to support your amazing day. But at the very minimum, give yourself the gift of a quick little practice that you can commit to showing up for every morning. And by the way, I have a couple dozen fantastic, great little morning practices and frameworks that can really empower your day and help you build. And they are all inside the Joy School. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in a bit, but we go deep into this stuff. It really is a true makeover of not just your mornings, but your days. 
All right. So number five, I love this one. Number five is giving yourself the gift of getting to know your brain a little bit better. So building a relationship with your brain is an incredible thing to look to do to empower your life. There is so much power in this. So number one, knowing that your brain sometimes tries to trick you through thought patterns or judging others or judging yourself, or like we were talking about earlier, being extra hard on yourself without actually really thinking about how that doesn't make sense, right? And Here's a big one too. Sometimes our brain will try to tell us that something is a priority when it's really just a distraction. And this is kind of a protective mechanism, right? Our brain is very good at creating distractions when we don't manage it. And part of the reason for this is because our brain's job is to protect us from things that we might fear or from scary things or or from things that might be dangerous. And that's a good thing. Our brain has good intentions. <laughs> but sometimes these responses are kind of false and they don't really serve us in the best way. And so learning to kind of talk to our brain and to really take a step back and examine what's my brain telling me right now versus what the actual truth is and questioning it. It is okay to question your own brain and getting to know your brain, building a relationship with your beautiful brain and questioning your brain is such an incredible form of self-love and self-care. And don't be hard on your brain. (laughs) Your brain, like I said, has good intentions. Manage your brain with kindness and understanding and a little balance in there of tough love. Ask yourself questions in different situations. When you find your brain making excuses for things or creating distractions, ask yourself questions like, is this the actual truth? Do I know this to be 100% true? Or is this my tricky side of my brain kind of messing with me, right? Or is this thought really something that is serving me right now? Or is there a better thought that I can choose in this moment, right? Learning to catch your brain and manage it with love is such a fantastic superpower. And as I said, our brain's job is to protect us, but learning how to manage its impulses, right, is so powerful. And this is a huge gift you can give yourself. And on a side note, I would also encourage you to do a little bit of research over the holidays and into the new year on what habits and maybe some supplements and different superfoods can help support your brain. Because when you keep your brain balanced and full of oxygen and full of good nutrients, it tends to create these distractions and create these extra anxieties and different things a little bit less. So really caring for it and managing it in every area is such a beautiful gift you can give yourself. All right, moving on to number six. This is a really big one, and this is probably our longest one. It's got a few facets to it, but it is super important. And that is, if you want to create your very best year ahead and your best life, Be willing to do things a bit differently. You can't get very far or create much of a change if you stay stuck in the same old habits and the same old mindsets. And sometimes we have the best of intentions, right? We set New Year's resolutions or we set some goals, but because we don't have the support that we need set up for ourselves and we don't set clear intentions and guidance and we don't commit and get ourselves into a place where we can be reminded and supported and create a solid foundation for those things we want to create, we tend to slide right back into those same old ruts. And then it's a year later and we're wondering why we're still in the exact same place, (laughs) right? Can you relate? So give yourself the gift of being willing to do things a little bit differently. And part of this means committing to your goals and intentions and what you want your life to look at on a new level in very mindful and intentional ways and setting yourself up little reminders and positive triggers to remind you of new thought patterns and habits that you want to adopt. Habit stacking is great for this. So for example, if there's a new little habit, let's say, let's take something really basic. Let's say you want to start flossing your teeth in the morning, right? And you've never done that before. You only floss it night. So 
what you would do is attach flossing your teeth to another habit that you already have, such as brushing your teeth or blow drying your hair or whatever it is that you do already automatically every morning, you attach that new habit to it. That's how you can create positive new habits a lot faster. So this is what I mean by being willing to do things differently and setting yourself up for success, right? Because that's really what it's all about. And in this theme, I also want to share that investing in yourself is the best investment that you can make. And sometimes doing things a little bit differently and being willing to shake things up requires investing in yourself. And I know this, I have firsthand can tell you that the best investments I have ever made in my life have been in myself and in my own growth and well-being. And in fact, I really think in this economy, (laughs) investing in you just might be the only investment that practically guarantees a return, right? Investing in your own growth, in your own dreams, in your own life. You cannot go wrong, my friends. And whether that's getting into a program, which I'm going to share a little bit about with you in just a minute, or just downloading a new audio book about something that you want to look to do in the new year, it can be that simple, or listening to a new podcast podcast or whatever it is to you to just shake things up, invest in you, invest in the resources that are going to support you in all the things that you want to do and create. I heard someone recently say, and this is a person who did some analysis, and they said that for every dollar a person spends on personal growth and improving their life, $3 comes back to them. (laughs) Now, I can really see that actually, because when you feel good, when you have clarity, when you have momentum and the incredible support and guidance in your life toward creating the life that you envision, this is when you begin to attract incredible things into your life, like great people and new opportunities and greater abundance. I know this firsthand. When I set out to change my life over 15 years ago, I dove into all this and I invested in myself and I did so much research and I weeded out a bunch of junk that doesn't work, but I really dove in and discovered so many practices and frameworks and habits that completely changed my life. And you have the power to do this too. And I can't emphasize this enough, being willing to shake things up, being willing to do things a little bit differently. And all of these things that we've talked about on the show today and so much more are all within my brand new membership, The Joy School. So speaking of doing things differently and shaking things up, I want to share with you that the doors are open and I want to extend a personal invitation to each of you listening to this show to visit jointhejoyschool.com to find out what it's all about to see if it might be right for you. This program, you are. I can't even, I am so excited about it. Like I spent a year, a full year creating this for you all. It is so much more unique and beautiful than I even envisioned when I set out to create it. It is like nothing else I have ever seen for leveling up our lives. It really is like a gym membership for the soul and creating our best life. And when you log in and you step inside, it feels like a boutique hotel. It is just such a beautiful online environment. Everything's so easy to navigate and to find topics that resonate with you in the moment and jump into a masterclass or download an audio or download an inspiration sheet. There are so many goodies inside and there is an option to join monthly or annually. So you can literally get started and get access to everything, even if you just join monthly. For as little as $79, you get access to everything and you get all the bonus gifts, which are worth way more than even that. So I really set this up to be accessible to everyone. And that is so important to me because when I set out to change my own life, I didn't have a lot of money. In fact, I had just quit a job, a corporate job that was making me miserable and I was living off my savings. And the idea of investing in myself was a little scary. I was like, do I want to spend this $79 or do I want to buy that ebook or whatever it is? But I I have to say, the more I invested in myself and then focused on knowing that if I invest in myself, I will create more abundance in my life in so many ways. That brought me so much peace and momentum. And I did find that the more I invested in myself, the more my life expanded. 
So I want to share that when you join us, you get access to a library packed with video workshops, audios, gorgeous printables. And I don't like to call things worksheets. I like to call them inspiration sheets. And there are some amazing ones within the program. New masterclass each month on a different empowering topic and a new live coaching call event with me every month where you can come on and be coached or you can submit a question and I answer your questions and all kinds of bonus content being added regularly to the library because I love creating new content when I feel inspired for the members. Plus, you get a private Facebook community where you can connect with like-minded people who are also looking to create their lives on purpose and increase their happiness, joy, and success. So if you are ready to do things differently and invest in you, I would love to support you in the coming year. I invite you to visit jointhejoyschool.com and you can see a video from me and see what it is all about. It really is so special, so unique. And you know what? If you don't love it, just shoot us an email and you can leave the program. It is not a problem as soon as your month or your membership that you signed up for is up. We will not automatically renew you if you choose to say, hey, this isn't for me. So there is really no risk. (laughs) So I extend you that invite. Join the joy school dot com. And I also want to say that right now. We are looking into December and to January for our topics. So here is what we're going to do in December. We're going to dive into extreme self-care and setting boundaries, which is perfect for the holidays, right? And in January, our theme is creating your best year ever. And there are going to be tons of tools and frameworks to set you up for success in every area in 2024. So please join me inside. I can't wait to connect with you there. Go to jointhejoyschool.com, check it out. And now it's time to dive into the part of the show called the Joy School Habits, where I share with you a small habit you can create that can have a big return on investment in your life. And by the way, creating positive new habits is a form of investing in yourself, right? Because it takes time and effort to create new habits. So that kind of circles back to number six of our gifts that we give ourselves. Really, creating new habits is a form of investing in yourself. And so the one I want to share with you today is deep breathing, but I'm actually going to share a special technique with you that I created for myself that is so simple, but so powerful. So deep breathing relieves stress and calms anxiety. It has so many benefits. It relaxes your muscles. It relaxes your organs and brings oxygen and fresh energy to your brain and your cells. It can stimulate your lymphatic system, which helps your body detox, and it can even improve gut health. So really deep breathing for a few minutes a day. And this is going back to when we talked earlier in the show about creating a little habit that you can show up for yourself each morning. This is a great one, actually. This is a perfect fit for that. So a recent study even found that a few minutes of deep breathing every day may even help protect our future brain against Alzheimer's. So that's pretty powerful. And if you think about it, many times we're just breathing super shallow. And I've talked about this on the podcast before, that we're not really paying attention to our breath. But oxygen really is the life of our body and our cells. So doing a few minutes each day of deep breathing has so many massive benefits. And especially if you have things like anxiety or ADHD, right? Which I do. I've had it my whole life, although I didn't know it until I was an adult. I'm sure many of you listening can relate to that. But deep breathing really is a form of calming your entire body and soul from head to toe. It's amazing. So with that, I'm going to teach you this quick little technique. And I actually have a class that is going up very soon in the bonus section of the Joy School that's going to dive into this even deeper. But I'm going to give you the simple version of it today and you can apply it right now. In fact, I encourage you to try it with me here on the show. So this is what I call the three times five. So this is simply breathe in for five seconds, hold it for five seconds and breathe out for five seconds. 
the three times five. So let's all do that together really quick. We're going to breathe in for five seconds, hold it for five seconds, and breathe out for five seconds. Ready? Here we go. Okay, did y'all hear me breathing out there? <laughs> so I encourage you to do this for a minute or two straight. You can just do this a couple of times if you need it, or you can do it for several minutes. In fact, I think in the study on uh, reducing risk of Alzheimer's, they actually did this for 20 minutes a day. Now, you may not be able to fit that in your schedule, but I promise you, you will get benefits even if you just do it for a couple of minutes a day. And this is something you can do in bed before you go to sleep or before you get out of bed, or you can take a break during your lunch break during the day, or if you need to energize your brain and your body in the afternoon, sit and close your eyes and do a minute or two of the three times five breath work. It is so powerful. It's such a great little framework. All right, my friends, this is our season finale, and I am so glad you've been with me. I am so grateful to each and every one of you for tuning in this season, and I'm going to miss you while we're taking our break for a few weeks, but I am going to spend the holidays with friends and family and creating all of the content for the December, January, and February themes within the Joy School, so I really hope to see you in there. And if you enjoyed this season and the show, I encourage you to write us a review over on Apple Podcasts or your favorite platform. These reviews make such a difference and I love hearing about you and from you. This is a way you can tell me a little bit about how you're enjoying the show and what you think and it means the world to me and it does help the show reach more people. And be sure to connect with me over on Facebook and Instagram. I'm there practically daily and it is me running those platforms and I love connecting with all of you. And visit my site at christylingspencer.com where you can access my free video masterclass, 11 Habits of the Happiest People and find other supportive resources I've got for you there as well. And don't forget to visit jointhejoyschool.com while the doors are still open so you can get all your questions answered and get started on all all you're dreaming of creating for the coming year. I can't wait to support you, friends. Sending you so much love. And until next time, remember, you've got what it takes to create more amazing days. And more amazing days make up a pretty amazing life. Have a fantastic week, my beautiful friends, and a fantastic few weeks and happy holidays. And I will see you soon. Much love and cheers. Cheers.